Next up, we have the wonderful Nikki Ray. Based in Lewis, Nikki is a renowned international speaker on analytics and customer experience and a huge advocate for data-driven marketing and decision-making. Nikki will be delivering an insightful talk into unboxing Google Analytics and capitalizing on its functionality to drive your online presence. Hi, my name's Nikki Ray. Um, I am so thankful to be here and to help Silicon Brighton support the NHS fundraiser for Brighton and Sussex University Hospitals NHS Charitable Funds. So please make sure you donate some money, even if it's just two pounds, anything would be fantastic. So to crack on to my presentation, uh, we are looking at unboxing Google Analytics. So I don't know if you've seen many times across YouTube, there are videos where people are opening up packages and talking through um, how they come across and what the great bits and what the, the defaults, what's not so good. I wanted to be able to do that with you. So imagine you are very new to Google Analytics. You've just started. You've just opened it for the first time. There's no customizations. What do you do next? So to give you an insight to um, my background to start with, as I said, my name is Nikki Ray. I am an analytics trainer and consultant for Future Insight Analytics based in Lewis, East Sussex. I have personally trained thousands and thousands of people how to use Google Analytics, whether that's at basic level or advanced level, and my contact details are below if you want to reach out. The thousands of people I have trained is what leads me into building this presentation. We don't have much time, so I'm gonna whip through, run it through as a presentation first of all, and then at the end, we're going to walk through an actual Google Analytics demo account so we can see it in action. So the key features of Google Analytics are basically the key features of digital marketing altogether. Firstly, we want to be able to see who has arrived at your website and how they got there. So did they come via organic search? Did they come via another website? Did they type your web domain name in directly? We want to be able to see how the different people got to your website. We also want to then look at um, the kind of pages that users that went to your website looked at. Were they looking at the homepage? Were they looking at product pages? Were they looking at contact details? This is really important information for us to know. It's also very useful to see how long people spend looking at these pages because it gives us an insight into how engaged they were with the website and generally we're going to want people to view two or more pages on our websites. Using Google Analytics out of the box we can also see information about whether the visitors were new versus returning, whether um, they were from a specific city like Brighton, what country they were from and perhaps things like age and other demographics. There's loads in Google Analytics that you can explore later. We can also see if people are doing things like submitting forms and buying things from your website, which we call in the industry conversions. Because Google Analytics out of the box does not come with these features, it takes some customization to set up. We're not going to talk about them in this presentation. Key metrics. This is when jargon comes into place, and that can be very much a reason for why people get put off learning more about Google Analytics. They open it up, it looks really complicated, and there's all these new words they've got to learn. The words are technical, but the ideas behind them aren't. So for example, sessions simply means how many times a page or a website was viewed. Users means how many people viewed a page or a website. Bounce rate means the rate of bounces from a website. If someone lands on your website and only views one page and then leaves your site, we call this a bounce. A bounce rate is the number of people that bounced from one page without viewing any others when compared with the people that did carry on to click a second or third or fourth page on your website. 
The idea being that perhaps people who bounce from your site were not really interested in the content on your site. Pages per session, so more in engagement metrics. On average, how many pages were viewed per visit? Again, we tend to want people to visit more than one page on our website. So this is a great metric to see if people are actually doing that. And lastly, on this brief, brief list of metrics, we can look at average session duration. So how long on average are people spending on our site? Is this something we should be decreasing? Is it something we should be increasing? Most cases we're looking to have people spend more time on site, but sometimes if it's a very high number, that can be because people are having issues finding the things on your site that you actually want them to get to. So imagine we've just opened up Google Analytics. The very first feature I want to point out to you is the date range selector. It's up in the right hand corner and you will see it's a date. So here we've got 21st of March 2020 to the 19th of April 2020. We set this date and any reports within the rest of the Google Analytics will report on these dates. So it's, you have to be very careful to make sure that this is the date that you are looking to find your information for. So it defaults to the last 30 days. But actually, maybe we want to look at just information from April. We would change this so it just covers the data from April. Also, um, underneath, I have an image whereby if you click on the drop down beside the date range selector, it will also offer you an option to compare to the previous year or the previous period. So if you tick that, press apply, it's really, really good information to see how your website is behaving when compared with the year before. To my mind, there are four main reports in Google Analytics. We have audience, acquisition, behavior, and conversions. You can find these on the left-hand side of Google Analytics once you've opened it. Audience is information about the people that go to your site. So are they new versus returning? What's their age? Which city are they from? That kind of information. Acquisition is channel information. So the channel is the word that we use to describe how somebody got to your website. So were they coming through organic search? Were they coming via email? Were they coming via another website? Were they coming by clicking your domain name straight in? How were they coming? Behavior tells us which pages people looked at on your site and how they interacted with that content. And then the fourth main report is conversions but I'm not going to go into this because to set up conversions, we need to do some customization, which we're not covering in this deck. So having said that I've trained thousands and thousands of people, the main question I get asked is which reports to look at first. People open up Google Analytics, they're astounded by how much information it, there is in there and they really don't know where to start. So I would start, especially when I'm training someone, by looking at these two reports. We have the behavior report, which tells us which kind of content people interacted with on our site. So how did people behave on our website? And then we have the acquisition report. How did people arrive at your site and how did you acquire that traffic to your site? Okay, so the key report that I would like you to look at is the behavior report. And that can be found by going to the left hand side by clicking behavior, site content, landing pages. And I've written that here for you, behavior, site content, landing pages. Underneath here, you can see an example of what that report will look like in Google Analytics. So the landing page is the page that someone arrives at your website on. So this is Google's own demo account. This is the home page. So they're saying the majority of people came to the landing page. So here we've got 2000, sorry, 28,227 sessions landed on the home page. Out of all these sessions, 75.77% of them, so three quarters of them, were new sessions. 
And then here we can see that uh, in a hard number, so that was in fact 21,387 people. Moving on, we can see the bounce rate. So the bounce rate from the home page is 51.04%. This means that over half the people that landed on the home page didn't go to a second page. They immediately left the website. So all they saw was the merchandise store homepage. For those that didn't bounce, so the 49%, the average pages per session were between three and four. So that 25% looked at between three or four pages. And the average time spent was two minutes and 43 seconds. And so you can look down this chart and begin to compare the data. But how did they get to the page? So we now have some metrics about the page. So we know how many sessions there were. We know how many new users were. We know the percentage of new users, what the bounce rate was. So we know key things about the landing on the homepage, but how did they actually get to that page? So in the previous slide, you would, for example, click here on the homepage link. And then above the data table, you can see there's a drop down menu with the word secondary dimension. If you click on that and start to type in channel, you will see default channel grouping come up. Please click on that. That will then bring up a table that looks similar to this. But what does this table actually tell me? Well, if we look here, we can see that we are looking just at the home page. Now we have an extra column which says default channel grouping. And for each of these channels, we can see how many sessions via these channels landed on the homepage. So by looking at this, we can see that organic search drove the most sessions to the homepage. And then we can begin to compare. This is useful because for example, if we were using, um, Google Ads, for example, or any sort of channels that cost money, then we would want to know how effective this is compared to other channels. And again, you can see the percentage of new sessions, new users, and bounce rate. So for example, if you're using Google Ads, you wouldn't necessarily want a high bounce rate because that would suggest that the people going to your website and landing on your website are leaving and you have just paid for them to visit your website. So next steps before I go into a live demo is how to get better at using GA. And there's one main source that I would go to. I mean, there's so many sources. You can just uh, look up YouTube and there's loads of different things you can find there. But Google Analytics has its own academy. It's broken down into bite-sized pieces of information and you can be certified at the end of it. So it's really, really fantastic tool. Now, live demo, so I am going to walk you through to give some of the information I've just given to you, to give it some context and hopefully cement and help your learning. Okay, so this is Google Analytics interface. When you open it up, this is what it looks like. On the left, you can see some of the reports I was referring to, in particular, audience acquisition, behavior and conversions. So just to open up, and have a tiny weenie explore. If you go into audience, we can go into demographics and you can look at the age, there, or the gender of people that have been to your site. And close that up again. You can also look, for example, at location. So here we can see countries. And then if I pop to the top here, there's primary dimension, I can click on city. And you can see the cities that people have come from. Just going to close up the audience report. Then we have acquisition. I'm going to click down to all traffic and then channels. And again, this is a report that you can explore 
after this session. But here you can see the varying channels, organic, direct referral, social, etc., and all the metrics that we were referring to in the deck. I'm going to close that up again. The one I really want to show you is the behavior report. This is one that I'd like you to be able to follow after this session. So behavior, site content, landing page. So I've got my report open, but ideally what I want to be able to do now is look at the data from March 2020. And I do that by scrolling up to the top of the page, clicking on my date range tool, and then actually I can just click on this blue bar here, which selects from the 1st of March to the 31st of March and press apply. And now I have my data, I know it's for March 2020. Okay, so this report, the Behaviour Site Content Landing Page Report, shows me the landing pages on the website. This first one is showing me home page. So this shows me how many sessions there were that landed on the home page. So 30,000 odd sessions landed on the home page. The next metric actually then shows me how much of this traffic was actually new. So we're looking at about three quarters of this traffic being new. And here we have the actual physical number, which is nearly 23,000. Moving on, we have the bounce rate. So the bounce rate from the home page is 50.56. So that means over half the people that landed on the home page left the website without looking at any other of the site content. For the other 49%, they traveled on through the site and tended to view between three and four pages in a session. The average session duration for these people was two minutes and 39 seconds. And although I said we weren't going to mention uh, e-commerce, et cetera, because that involved customization, if you did have that set up, you'd also be able to see that there was 22 transactions and that drove $1,084 worth of revenue. We have a different one here as well. This is the Google YouTube branding part of their merchandise store. You can then compare these session data. You compare how many new sessions there were. So although that's a lot less traffic, it was for a specific page and the percentage of sessions was 90%. So the majority of traffic to that page was new. Bounce rate to the page was fairly high, really. Um, it was still over 50%. The pages per session were 3.25. And the average session duration was about a minute and a half. And again, here we can see the transactions. What I would like to now show you is how you can dig deeper and get more information from this. So say for example, I want to look at this page, I click on it, so I can see the data just for that page. Above the table here, we have something called the secondary dimension, which if I click on, start to type channel, it brings up this here, which says default channel grouping, you click on that, then you get to see the different channels that drove traffic to these landing pages. So we can see for the majority of sessions that landed on this page came from organic search. The second most amount of sessions that came to this site page was from social. If we have a look then at percentage of new sessions, we can see that the social drove more new sessions than organic search. But in terms of hard numbers, it was less amount of users. However, the bounce rate from social media traffic was higher than that of organic search. So you have to decide if bounce rate is important if bounces from your website are important do you just want social media people to see that page and go and you're fine with that 
or do you actually want them to stick around and purchase something? Again, you can see pages per session and you can see the average duration. Also with these charts and these columns, you can rearrange like so. So now we can see sessions, for example, from ascending instead of descending. So this is an exercise that should be fairly simple to follow. As if you have Google Analytics set up correctly on your site, this information will be in there. And this is a great exercise to kind of get your head around some basic metrics and then build out because you're starting to use a report. Once you see that it's your, your own data, it will start to make so much more sense. Once you get your head around the behavior report, perhaps you could then try looking at the other reports. But as said, for more information, for more learning, please go to the Google Analytics Academy. It's fantastic, it's really useful, it takes you through a lovely level. Thank you very much, that's me for today. The final thing I would like to say is, please, please, please donate to the charity. Thank you very much. Bye.